So, the strange case of uh, Judy Wildman, uh, PhD, just keeps on getting really, really strange. Because now, her supervisor, a guy called Brian Martin, at the university, has written a defence of her PhD thesis. And, oh my, oh my, oh my. <laughs> This just gets keep, keeps on getting stranger and stranger and stranger the more stuff comes out about this. Because no one is saying, right, let's get to one of the carts and the main core criticisms. Like, particularly um, Brian and other basically anti vaxxing people have basically using as their main core argument. She has free academic freedom to write this paper. No one is um, making this argument that she doesn't have the right to make this paper. What we are saying, people who are pro-vaccination pro and people, again, who have read her vaccination uh, paper and, oh my God, um, some of the, again, some of the stuff she says in there is out and out pseudoscience, conspiracy theories with no evidence to back up what she is saying. And again, she got a PhD for providing no evidence to back her support. How did she get this PhD? This is the question that um, everyone, you know, from Australia to the UK is asking. How the hell did she end up getting this PhD when she has provided no evidence? So, now we go on to a supervisor, a guy called Brian Martin. Now, from what I can understand, uh, looking into this guy, he is a, physis a physicist. From what I understand, that's what his PhD is in. And again, this is... This is, again, this just doesn't make any sense to me, because you've got... Somebody studying social sciences, who's a doing a PhD in philosophy writing her PhD thesis on um, the critical analysis of the Australian government's vaccination policy, who is then being over, you know, overseen by someone who is a physicist. It, it, it just doesn't make any sense, you know, if you were going to do this and, you know, this this guy was had a PhD in health or biology, okay, I don't understand that, but what, what again, what went wrong here? <laughs> what, why wasn't she assigned someone who had, um, you know, uh, you know, a medical understanding. Because by all accounts, that's what she should have been given. In fact, from what I've, again, what has been coming out, again, is that other countries, she would have been given someone who was in medical possession or had uh, something to do with, you know, vaccination. So, again, he starts... Again, he starts off basically... Uh, oh, I'll leave a link to this below so you can read it yourself, but we're just going to quickly cover things. So he talks about the thesis. And he basically talks about um, her, about the, the Australian policy, you know, and what she said in her thing. And he said that, you know, he's supervised quite a number of PhD theses on controversial topics... And I'm just like, okay, so you may have supervised other things, but here's the thing. What she has written doesn't have any evidence to back up what she's saying. <laughs> this is absolutely insane. And then he goes on to the um, next part of his argument, is the stop the anti-vaccination attacks. 
So he starts off with, Judy's thesis has come to public attention because a group, a group called Stop the Australian Anti-Vax Network. Um, these citizens group was set up in 2009 with the express purposes of discrediting and destroying the Australian Vaccination Network. A citizens uh, supporting group uh, supporting free choice by parents about their children's vaccination and the critical standard of government vaccination policy. Because your Australian vaccination network, Brian, was putting out incorrect uh, information about vaccines, which in turn are caught putting children at risk. And not only their own children, but you're talking um, other children who are potentially have had uh, the vaccine as well. They are at risk because, again, that vaccine... Um, might essentially basically become useless because it's had time to essentially get stronger. Uh, you're also putting people at risk who are on, um, you know, Im you know, immune depressant diseases who would maybe have like heart transplant and have to take it. You know, there's all sorts of you know dangers these people are putting uh, other people in, not uh, you know, not just their own children. So again, I think. Um, you know, the anti-vaccination network is entirely right and justified in what they, in what they do. Because, again, <laughs> they're spreading, you know, dangerous stuff. So, again, the anti-vaccination network... Um again, is entirely justified on their attacks on these people that are spreading pseudoscience. So, again, you just don't seem to understand this. <laughs> and again, I don't know why. Um, again, it would be fascinating to actually talk with him on what his views of vaccination are. Um, and he basically goes on to... Um, you know, they try to stop the students' research. Um, yeah, because again, she's basically posted um, again exactly what the other guys are saying. You know, you say, "Oh, it's you know free choice." It's not free choice. It's being idi an idiot. <laughs> and basically, what she what she has posted is amounts to nothing but a massive three hundred and ninety page rant about vaccinations supported by no evidence to back up her claims and vast coatings of conspiracy theories. And again, her very quote comments on smallpox are so incredibly wrong and out and out dangerous. I cannot believe um, she actually got it. If she actually had to do a PhD defence, as she would have had to do in any other country except, from what I can tell, Australia, she would have been ripped to pieces. She would have not have got her PhD thesis if she'd had to do a PhD defence. No way in hell. He then goes on to talk about the role of uh, expertise. Um, and says that some others apparently believe that only people qualified to comment about vaccination policy are experts who have degree and referenced publications in scientific journals. For example, immunology and epidemiology. Yes, yes, they should, because they're the ones that study it. They're the ones that carry out this research. They're the ones with the most knowledge on this subject. Judy Wildman did not approach anyone about doing this for her research. Which, considering she's writing a PhD thesis on vaccinations, is quite unusual. Because you'd think you'd go to the most knowledgeable people on this. And again, one of the guys, again, that came out literally, I think it was the day, almost the day after, came out and said, look, I, you know, I went to her and said, you know, does she want my expertise on this paper? She turned him down because she wasn't interested in her own words, she wasn't interested in hearing any opinions that would discredit hers. She just wasn't interested. 
Anyway, he continues in this, that a moment's reflection should reveal the flaw in this claim. Being an expert in immunology or epidemiology, usually a narrow aspect of such a field, gives no special insight into vaccination policy. Yes, it does, because these people come up with the vaccination policy. Oh. Again, we go on to... Um, Next is the supervisation, uh, you know, examination. You know, he says start some um, SNVAs, which is Stop the Anti-Vaccine Network, uh, have claimed that I am not qualified to supervise a thesis on vaccination policy because I have no specialist scientific credentials in the field. My P he says his PhD is in theoretical physics. So again, I have to wonder, why are you supervising this? <laughs> Because, again, someone who would have had that would have gone, hold on, what you are saying is wrong. She would have never have gotten her PhD thesis. At all. <laughs> and again, he goes on to say, oh, well, you know, uh, we are, you know, you know, who cares if I'm not a uh, thing, you know. Supervisors are not expected to be authorities on every aspect of a student's thesis. At some point in a PhD, a good student moves into original areas. Really, was Judy Wildman's original area, like, conspiracy theories? Because apparently, according to you, it must be. A supervisor is a guide, not a teacher, uh, who knows all the answers. Nor does a supervisor have to agree with the student's findings. Again, I'd love to talk to this guy and get his actual... Um, input on this. I think it will be interesting. Um, and again, he talks about, again, the examination process. We don't even know who the examiners are because the university blocked them. There is a freedom of information uh, request currently pending about this, which will undoubtedly be highly amusing when it comes out. So... Again, it goes on to the last part of what to look for criticism. When, people's, when people criticise a uh, student's work, it's worth checking for telltale signs, including uh, when they are not genuine concerns about quality and probability instead of part of a campaign to discredit viewpoints they oppose. This is just not a, a viewpoint. This is scientific consensus that vaccinations work. And your student has written a paper criticising the very way that vaccines do not work. And yet she has ignored hundreds, if not thousands of papers saying that vaccinations work. She has ignored a guy who, was critic, who works for the World Health Organisation, who is very speciality is it in you know, immunization and epidemiology and she ignored him that is that's valid criticism why the hell would she ignore all this research <laughs> again so he lists these viewpoints what to look for they attack the person not just their work well i'm sorry but i think judy wildman is a complete moron and i have no uh, qualms about calling it that. This person has put out a paper and got a PhD thesis for basically citing pseudoscience and conspiracy theories. I'm sorry, what gives her the right to have a PhD thesis? If you are saying that, then you can write a PhD thesis on like, you know, how dragons are real, because, well, they're in there somewhere, so why not? <laughs> That's that's how that's how ridiculous it's getting, and this is how embarrassing the university looks. Number two, they concentrate on alleged flaws in the work, focusing on small details and ignoring central points. Okay, the problem is her central points are basically vaccinations don't work. She blames uh, the World Health Organization for. Uh, cover-ups of vaccines, again, providing no evidence that this is the case. She then talks about how um, the there's a program that's aimed, solely aimed, 
in South Africa, no, in uh, South Africa. And the vaccination policy there is different to Australia's and then criticises it because, well, why isn't the vaccination policy the same? It isn't the same because, again, if she even bothered to look in, like, you know, epidemiology and the study of this such things, in some case, in some countries, you never even need to have this vaccine unless you are literally going to travel to this area. Again, take Japan, yellow fever. You do not need to have a vaccine against yellow fever unless you are travelling to Japan or somewhere in that area where the disease is common. Or the... You don't need it otherwise. Otherwise, it's just a pointless vaccine and again, it's a waste of money. Again, research never brings this up. Number three, uh, they make no comparisons with other students or theses with standard practice, but rather make criticisms in isolation or according to their own uh, assumed standards. <laughs> okay, again, my... I never went as high as a PhD thesis. I have a Bachelor of Science in Media Production. Right? I... No, I'm not qualified to comment on, you know, anti, you know, vaccination policies and things like that. I never would. But, you know, I trust, you know, expertise of other people and the fact that there is a large scientific consensus as well as a mountain of evidence I could read on that subject. And yet again, your student has chosen to do none of this. Number four, they assume that findings contrary to what they believe uh, is correct and must be wrong or dangerous or both. Yes, they are, because again, there is a mountain of evidence that say vaccines work. And yet, your student has ignored the, all this, you know, vast evidence. And again, cherry-picked her own studies. Her own evidence. That are thoroughly discredited studies. What, what, what are we to make of this? In, in all goodness sense because again this saga just keeps on getting stranger and stranger and stranger and his conclusion is to this is that the attacks on Julie Wildman and her PhD research should be understood as part of a campaign to denigrate and discourage anyone who dares make public criticisms of standard vaccination policy no one is saying that she, uh, she doesn't have the right to do so what they are saying is is that if she wants to criticise policy, she should have evidence to back up her points. And the evidence that she presented is pseudoscience, it's conspiracy theories, and it's papers that have been shown to be wrong. And, it watch, and, her, and her opinions on what smallpox, and the fact that we should run a study on smallpox where without vaccinating people, by the way, and we'll get into this later, right? That's that's her what she says, and we'll again I'll do a video separate because oh my god, it's ridiculous. But this is not a coordinated campaign. What we are trying to understand is how the hell she managed to get a PhD purely based on what her evidence is saying. This is like submitting a PhD thesis with no evidence to back up what you are saying. Again, anywhere else she would be expected to do a PhD defence. And if she did a PhD defence, anywhere else she would fail. Except in Australia, where your PhD is sent off to two other people who, again, the university haven't named, and as a result a Freedom of Information Act has to be sub submitted to these people to find out who they are. You know, this saga has gone from, you know, absolutely what the hell is going on to, oh my God, what the hell is going on? Why has this person got a PhD thesis? That is literally at the point we are now. Are at now. What's even worse is that this gives the anti-vaxxers... Um, you know, almost a, a seal of authority when they have nothing. She has she has essentially become this martyr, 
And, you know, you look on... Um, there's a number of people have written, hooray for Judy Wildman for getting this PhD thesis. And it is absolutely insane. And remember, this is not the first time this has happened. She wrote her master's thesis on, the, on a similar topic. The fact that she has got a PhD is out and out unbelievable. I cannot believe the university would do this. And it makes them look like idiots. It generally does. In any other university in the world, this would not fly. This would there is absolutely no way this would pass. Absolutely no way. And yet, here we are. Um yeah. It is absolutely insane and I'm going to keep on following tabs on this story now and again because, as I've said, it just gets more and more weirder. You know, the deeper down the rabbit hole we go, the weirder it becomes.